Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so freestyling, not rapping. I, I don't rap necessarily, um, although I have written raps as a young person. It's not, that's not my gift. Uh, we're talking, that's it. Um, and in talking, I don't know what I'm going to say as normal. So I usually try to give you a disclaimer, but I don't have anything in mind. It's not like I'm anticipating heavy conversation, but you know how my brain goes probably end up heavy anyway somehow at any rate um hope everybody's having a fantastic day uh i just woke up it's about six in the morning six fifteen, something like that and uh nothing's really going on here uh, i just got my playlist curation latest edition entry done or whatever mix some african uh afro beats and some other modern music um, together, try to see how it works. I ain't heard it yet, so I don't know how it turned out, but I had a good time making it last night before bed, and that's really what it's about for me. I don't feel like I'm working when I'm doing what it is that I'm doing. Um, it's fun, you know, it's just leisure. I understand that people are out there making a real living off of it, living through pressures and all these different things, uh, trying to meet deadlines, stuff like that, but for me, I just do it for fun and so it's one of those situations where it's like I don't know how I would enjoy it if I were professional but I do uh, definitely give credence to the idea that I'm doing something that others are doing you know professionally and I do that kind of thing with everything that I do you know broadcasting stuff like that people are working really really hard to get successful and to get good at what it is that I'm doing and, and, and I respect that there's certain paths you have to take in order to get known and, and to, to grow in the field. Uh, and I'm just taking a different route. I'm just kind of doing it as le at, at my leisure. You know, this is something I felt like in the past, if my mother had a camera in, in her era when she was a young person, she would have had an opportunity to do things a certain way if she wanted to. You know what I mean? Without having to go through the avenues of just having to to do certain things in order to have a voice you know the 80s and 90s you got to be a part of a radio station in order to talk broadcasting you gotta you know what i mean that was kind of how it was if you wanted to be a singer you had to go through certain avenues you got to talk to certain people you got to sign certain things that kind of stuff now it's like if you got a camera if you have your phone i think i'm literally proving that you can do it now if you're not if you're looking for a certain level of success or if you're looking for a certain level of um, reach or what have you, you got to do more than what I'm doing, obviously. But just in terms of just wanting to get it out, yeah, I love the era that we're in because you can do that. You can literally just say, you know what, I want to be a basketball analyst. I'm going to turn on my phone and do it to the best of my ability. I don't need another soul. I don't need to ask nobody. I don't need any extra money. I don't need nothing. I just need the information that's right here and my voice, and that's it. So... You know what I mean, I just want to continue to encourage people to understand how little it takes to get started in things that you want to do. I look at a lot of these artists, young kids, and the stuff that we know as difficult to do, <clears throat> they have found easy ways to do it, and they're successful, you know. And so that's that's ultimately what I just want to say. It's like, you know, looking at these young kids and, and people who are uh, beneath me in, in, in age, and I just understand that they understand um, how to overcome certain things internally that uh, my generation inherently had. Things that make us say, you know what, let me hesitate. Things that make us look at ourselves and say, you know what, it's not going to be acceptable if I do this. Or, you know, just a bunch of hesitation things that come from the era of the past. You know, I think about... You know, we talk about race relations and stuff like that. An African-American man may not feel comfortable speaking on certain things that I turn on the camera to speak on. You know, I think about who was a real trailblazer in that regard. People who really took the dangers on and took on the pressures and took on <clears throat> the risk to be the guys or the gals that first started the process of something. First stood on a, on a soapbox and said something. First took it upon themselves to try to do something outside of the normal paths that are laid out for us to take in this country. You know, I think about how 
they faced adversity, how they ultimately had to overcome people calling them uh, weird and crazy or everything that has to go with that. I think about, um, you know, just the overall the resistance that may have come their way. <laughs> Understanding that because they were trailblazers, because they stood out there when nobody agreed with them, because they said, I'm going to do something new that everybody else thinks is not normal. They created a normal for all of, for people like myself who don't have to consider such things, who are not looked at as strange because of what it is that they began and looked weird doing that ultimately uh, was the last time anybody was ever going to be looked weird doing that. So I just think about trailblazers, and I'm figuring out, trying to figure out how I can, uh, how I can be the first to do something. Not necessarily because I want to exalt myself in doing something, just because I know that that's how you start the process of making something normal. A unique brain has to say, "Yeah, I'm gonna do that." Against the grain, everybody else looks at what I'm doing and say, "That's you. That's unique. I don't know what that's about. I, I don't. That's not what we do." But it's going to spark a new mind, spark a new thought in that mind. They're going to see it work. And then from there, they're going to say it's not weird anymore. Now, nah, okay. it's okay for me to try this too. And I think as it pertains to the subject of difficult conversations, um, I think that's kind of where I want to find myself. In a position to somehow respectfully articulate certain things that I don't think have uh, been discussed by a mind like mine. I'll say it like that. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> coming up to the, to, the, to the conversation and saying, yo, can we understand this about this group? Can we speak on this conversation? Can we bring to the forefront a conversation that ain't going to make people feel too comfortable, but hopefully by the end of that conversation, they'll understand that there is understanding I'm looking to reach by bringing up the conversation and healing that I'm hoping to gain or what have you, whatever, would be appropriate. So that's kind of my niche. That's why you see me bringing up certain topics on this channel that maybe don't have nothing to do with me. Maybe I'm not um, supposed to be talking about. It's because I want to bring to the forefront the understanding that there are responsible ways to get um, what's in out. There are responsible ways to do that. And we can seek those ways and we can, we can effectively do what we need to do. Um, to, to communicate what we need to communicate and and heal as a nation and as a people as we continue to grow forward and, 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 and gain uh, so much from whatever our efforts are going to be. I think in the past we look at how we've moved as man and there's a lot of resentment attached to our successes. There's a lot of <clears throat> atrocities attached to our um, to what it is that ultimately brought us to be together I think in this particular country um, and we have to live in that space without having these type of conversations we got to live in that space without healing from those things that were done to us and I say done to us because a lot of it were, was handed to us over time things that generations past did that now we're just you know benefiting from or what have you but some of those things they hurt people and then they heard people that are still walking around today. So I think the, what is missing is someone who can effectively articulate the common person's feelings about that while helping the common person see some things that maybe they don't see on their level. I think that's what I can be somewhat of a bridge of understanding um, for people who may not be able to have such bridges ever I don't see many bridges that would gap that would bring the gap together between people on my level and people who think um, in ways and have power that can sway you know what I mean they don't they don't connect but they have to because one controls what the other does and I think a lot of times I think it's out of misunderstanding because people like myself haven't done enough talking <clears throat> I really believe that. I think there is a natural, a very natural, uh, the word I guess is vibe or relationship or aura or something in that ballpark between those who have it all and those who are without. 
there's a huge disconnect. And I think the disconnect is those without think that those who have are just inherently evil. Just inherently. One percenters automatically, just by sheer nature, are evil. But what I've come to understand <clears throat> just out of sheer un just out of sheer living is that context removes understanding and responsibilities have to be understood if not shared and the less you're responsible for the less there will be to consider from your perspective and with that comes a simplicity or naivete about things and how they're supposed to operate and how simple it is to get certain things to you and how it looks when certain things are done. We think it looks a certain way, but when you're on high and you're responsible for all those things, it doesn't look that way. But here's also something I understand. When you're on high, you're far in a way detached from the understanding of what it means to be down there. Those understandings that you have about how things operate, you got to remove those from your head in order to relate to those who don't get it, but still have to live through it. And that's where the disconnect comes in. And then, and then it's just the understanding that those two entities can't, just because of the sheer nature of what is between them, they cannot trust. That's what I understand. That's something that I was born understanding. Those two sides, just by the nature of the evil between them, cannot trust one another. Because the one percenters, uh, whomever they are, understand that it's, it's those who are like myself. It's almost irresponsible not to do everything we can to help the people around us and ourselves. That's that's what it is. It's not about, I'm going to take from you because I'm evil and I hate you. Or I'm going to scheme against you because of it. No. Poor people have people that they cannot help. And that's what I always try to get people to understand on this camera. People who are in the 1% or people who even have a million dollars or $500,000. You don't have that in your present day. To where you have people you love and they're starving. You have people you love who are looking to you to feed them and you can't help them. You got people who are looking to you to help yourself and you can't help yourself. Like that puts poor people in a position to where they come across a one percenter. You got to consider what that person's, a fraction of that person's wealth can do for you. And it makes it so that the trust has an evil between it. You know, that's what it is. So they look... That the other side is, yeah, and the other side looks at them as a big evil demon that wants to keep everything from them. <clears throat> or a big evil demon that ultimately wants to keep them in the dark about what the truth is so that they can continue hurting them in one direction or another. Which is what this is. The problem is, is what we have not yet come to understand between one another is how necessary that may be. See, I think, I personally think that those at the top do not share enough of the context necessary for us to settle in and be cool if we understood how things operate and why things are done we would be more at peace in the conspiracy side of the world and in this side of, of of thinking because a lot of times conspiracy theorists don't understand why certain things need to be in place on a macro level when things are small yeah things are very simple here's a dollar give me my goods Here's this. This is how we handle it. It's a lawsuit if we have a problem. Those things don't work on high when you're responsible for millions and millions of people. And billions and trillions of dollars. <laughs> it's just too much to consider. It's too much to understand. It's too much to communicate with others. And it's too much going on as opposed to a, a person who doesn't have a lot, not responsible for a lot. And life is simple. And they expect the things on high to be just as simple. That needs to be, that, that gap needs to be closed. That notion that things can be simply done has to be understood as no longer the case.
And if everybody on this level understands how difficult things are, we can have more realistic expectations and maneuver better within the environment we're in. But it does not benefit a lot for everyone to know. And that's why we need people like myself to just get that information or get that notion or ask those questions in the air because we're not going to get it no other way unless somebody just thinks a way around it from within it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's exactly what I can. I pride myself on trying to become someone who can effectively be in it, think above it, around it, and find and make some sense between it. That's what I'm about. So I'm always thinking as if I'm in control of the entire world. I'm always thinking as if I have nothing at all. I'm always trying to put myself in perspectives of both parties. And I think I'm in a space where I always try to balance that out with the naivete that I have without knowing enough, having done the homework to know certain specifics and to understand that there's always a context to find even under the context you find. And a lot of times things boil down to very simple stuff. You look at the top of the of the food chain, you think it's something special. Nah, it's just some guy mad at his girlfriend. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And that's why it's important that we treat others and everybody with respect because you don't know who you're coming across. You don't know who you're running into. You know, you might find somebody, you might meet somebody on the street randomly. You give them a bad, you know, bad time. They walk away with God knows what within their favor with, or within their power to do. You know, for all you know, you might be running into somebody who's in control of what happens next. You gave them a bad time and now they walk away with a bad taste in their mouth about the world. They go back and do whatever they're going to do. And, this, and, you know, it's like, that's why I try to put out good energy. No matter if it's one person watching my video or a million people watching my videos, because that one person could probably could possibly affect a million people. You know what I'm saying? All it takes is that one person to hear something that you said and then run with it with all that they can do. That's it. So that's that's kind of how I approach the situation. I understand that, and um, there's a lot for me to learn in order to effectively do what it is that I want to do. But for the time being, I think I got the brain for it. Um, I think I know how to uh, uh, talk in such a way that makes people understand at least where I'm trying to get to. And um, hopefully we can go on this journey together and try to find a way to bridge that gap. Try to find a way to understand what it is that may be there to understand or ask questions that maybe just aren't being asked. You know? And disarm. Disarm any notion that certain things cannot be talked about I understand that certain things do not need to be talked about some words don't need to be said but I don't think we need to walk around on eggshells as if we can't amicably have tough conversations as a people that's another thing that I want to kind of work on I just feel like a lot of people want to sweep things under the rug because they're afraid they're going to get cancelled if they talk about it they're afraid they're going to get the reprimands and the different things that happen if they say certain things I don't want to live in a world where I'm afraid to use my mouth because at the end of the day no matter what it is I'm afraid of life is temporary so you better get what's in responsibly out and the word responsible is probably very key in all of that but yeah it's not I don't think we have gone very far ignoring certain things history should not be lost I, I, I was watching uh, IG this morning, and of course, you know, I always try to tap in with Kyrie these days because he's always posting something that I think is very interesting. And today, he was posting something on uh, just the history of this country and, and illustrating just how, um, you know, certain aspects of the slave trade went, how it went in this country, things of that nature. He was posting information, and I'm just thinking to myself. These are things that should have been in our history books. These are things that should be common knowledge. These are things that an athlete should not be uh, forced to teach the people. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's just sad. I look up and I say, I wonder if Kareem Abdul-Jabbar saw that post. Because basically what, what Kyrie was trying to teach the people about was... Um, indigenous people and, and how their land was taken from them and, and, and how that process went 
the Atlantic slave trade and things of that nature, stuff that should have been in my books, but I wasn't reading about because I was reading about something else in my history books, you know, stuff that didn't necessarily have to do with the truth about indigenous people. They told me about the Indians. I for sure learned about the Indians and Thanksgiving and the pilgrims and how they sat down with them and broke bread with them. And, you know what I mean? I learned about all that. But what I didn't know is what I was ultimately able to learn in the paragraphs that I read with Kyrie, of course. I know it now. I've known it since. But that information wasn't in those books when I was 12, 13 years old. You know what I mean? And it's like, I don't know. I just get really frustrated. I look at what's going on with Kanye. Do I like the method that Kanye's going about things? I don't love the method he's going about things. I think he's going about it in bad energy because he's hurt right now. I think his feelings are hurt that he's engaging what he's doing with a little bit of that attached to it, which I don't think is good for him. But I still think he's trying to do the same thing. I still think him and Kyrie Irving are kind of along the same lines. They're trying to teach people something while being in a space of not being respected by the institution and the overall, you know, group that would otherwise not want you to say certain things in position of power. That seems like they're both mad at those two people. And they both seem like they're two people who are different in nature but are still trying to teach us the same type of things. And I just realized when you were people like that, yeah, you're going to have the establishment of, uh, mad at you. You're going to have the establishment painting pictures of you. You're going to hear about stuff that you did that maybe we won't hear nobody else did. We're going to hear about stuff that got canceled that you were a part of that maybe they ain't going to tell us nothing about anything else that got canceled that someone else is a part of. Like, these are the type of things I'm just recognizing why my voice is necessary. <laughs> Because a guy like Kyrie is going to get silenced. A guy like Kanye is going to get silenced. A guy like me, they're not even listening to me. They ain't listening to me. They ain't going to realize they should have silenced me until well after all this stuff is done. I'll probably be dead by the time they realize it should have been quiet in my blood, my black self. And that's the point. There needs to be people out here who are saying these type of things, who are not looking to be famous, who are not looking to be successful, but are just as talented. Because that removes the need for the, the power that those who are in a position to control us have over us when it comes to our voice. What do they have over Kanye? The fact that Kanye wants to be heard by everybody and wants to continue to be famous and have money. That's the leverage they have over him. No matter how far he digs, eventually his interests are going to get run into. Why? Because he's still looking for money, still looking to be famous. That's where they get you. No matter what. As long as you're looking to be their definition of successful, you're going to always run into problems when you try to do what it is that you think is right. That's what I've learned. Why that is, I'm sure there's context to that. Controlling people, as we said in the first half of the video, there's reason for things and why they're done a certain way. They don't want people like me talking for reasons, specific reasons that maybe I'm not privy to, but that's not the point. Until they tell us why I should be silent, I'm going to continue to want to speak. And that's the point. This is what I'm talking about. They need to help us understand what it is they understand so that we can fall in line if it's necessary for us to do so. Otherwise, we're just going to look at them as a greater evil to buck for no reason, even if it doesn't benefit us to buck them. This is why I feel what I'm doing is necessary because we have to understand at least as much as we need to understand so that we don't mess up stuff that we don't want to mess up fighting an establishment that may not be all against us. Not all. Not everything that they do necessarily should be undone. Maybe. And why I say maybe is because we don't know. But we have to have some balance of fathoming of such so that we don't undo what should not be undone. And I think a lot of times people, you know, when they look to disrupt the establishment, you got to remember this is a game of Jenga. Some things need to be pulled to fix things. Other things will be pulled to destroy everything. And that is why I think I'm necessary as well. But I think, I think the Kanye's and the Kyrie's, I don't know that they have that in mind when they're disrupting things. I don't know that they see that certain structure may be necessary in the short term at the very least. And certain things need to be done at a certain time. And that is ultimately what I think we all need to come to understanding. It's, it, it, the lowest common denominator in the difference between us and them is timing. Once you understand that things need to be done at a certain time and it can't be done too early and it certainly can't be done too late, then you understand why things are as they are and may even understand why we're not told certain things. You see what I'm saying? Some things you have to know without anyone ever telling you. 
in this work. Some things are only given to those who need to know. Somehow, we need to get that message. The information that's being kept from us, it needs to come our way somehow. And I, as a spiritual person, believe that the source himself, the God himself, the one who created us, however you call him, whatever his name is, her name is, I think they create people like myself, create people like Kanye, create people like Kyrie and all these different mercurial people in different worlds and walks of life who have different ways of thinking that are outside of what's normal for us around us. I think he makes these people so that they will have some way out of this cloak, this, this blinding, because there is no other way. You see what I'm saying? The system itself is created for those to never question, never wonder, never ask, and never see. What is there to wonder about in regards to these things? It's, you're not supposed to even be looking at this stuff. You're supposed to be too warped up in whatever it is you love. Your, 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 your personal situation with your family, your life, and your, your professionalism and your own goals. You're supposed to be too selfish to be caring about any of this. You're supposed to be too distracted in terms of your, uh, the various things going on. The real news in the world, everything that's going on around you, you're focused on that. Your politics, you're supposed to be focused on that. Your media, your news, your... Uh, entertainment, sports, all of those things are supposed to be preoccupying your mind to where you're not thinking like this. And then you have too many people around in your family, your lifestyle, you're too close to life. You're going on vacation, you got different things going on in your world. You're not sitting still like me thinking about this stuff. You're not allowed to. That's basically what I'm here to tell you. I've taken things in terms of my time, ignored certain things that put me at complete risk in order to have the space of mind that I'm in to live exactly the way I've lived, to think exactly the way I've thought, to say exactly what I'm saying at the times I'm saying it. There ain't no way this is supposed to be possible. Even I am not supposed to be able to do this. I'm supposed to be able to go, I'm supposed to be at work. I'm supposed to have people around. I'm supposed to be lonely when I'm this alone. Do you see what I'm saying? I firmly believe that I am wired so very uniquely to be exactly who I am. <laughs> Because I don't know of anybody like me. I don't know anybody who would who would live in comfortably in the environments I'm in. I don't know who would choose to do things that I do when I'm in this environment. I just don't think nobody else is like this. And so that's why I speak freely, knowing that I don't know a lot of times what I'm talking about. Knowing that I have never been in some of these situations. I'll be the first person to tell y'all. Most people who live like me should not effectively be qualified at all to speak on the things that I talk about. If you listen enough to what I say, you will come to the conclusion that I either make sense or don't. That's on you. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm telling you is, I've seen it over the years, and enough of the stuff that I've had this little mindset about has come together. It adds up. I've been right. I've been barking up the right tree too many times. Too many times. To where now I have a certain level of confidence where it's like, yeah, things have happened that I've predicted, things have paid out the way I said it was, people felt the way they, I said they felt even though they said they didn't at the time. I've been right so many times to now I just trust it. You know, that's, that's where we're at. In 38 years, you just get to a point where you just trust it. If this was 10 years ago, I'd have been like, nah, I don't, I ain't. People don't think I'm crazy, I, nah, I can't do this. Or nah, I don't have the confidence for that. What I think of myself is a lie, that's not real. All those different things were in place. Now it's just like, bro, if I say something wrong, I'm. I'm, I'm comfortable enough in my skin to say sorry. If I say something out of pocket and I learn something new, I'll come back on here and tell people I learned something new. If I meet somebody in the street and we not, need to have a man to man about something I've said, I've already done that several times in my life. In situ with situations I've proven that I can speak to someone about something that ain't comfortable and walk away with my life at the very least. It's happened more than once. I'm okay. You know what I mean? If somebody want to knock me off for something that I've said, I've gotten out of those situations before. And I will handle those situations as they come. You know what I mean? But I ain't going to look at somebody in the face and say I was looking to hurt you. Or looking to make you mad. Or looking to disrespect you. Because it ain't never that. It ain't never that. It's usually some variation of me sitting in my house looking at stuff like it's a chess piece and have no emotions attached to it. You know what I mean? And most importantly, a bigger understanding and a bigger desire to see people understand whatever it is I'm talking about. 
so I speak matter of factly and this and that. But once you once you sit down with me, you're gonna find out that I'm the type of person that's praying for you. I'm the type of dude who's who who prides himself on your child being safe in my presence. If for some reason something's going on, I trust that I would lay my life down for your child. Whoever they are, white, black, Asian, Korean, whatever, I don't care. That's who I want to be, someone who helps the next generation succeed in whatever way I can. That's what I'm about. I'm a forever person. I'm not looking to appeal to everybody today because I think the people today will come around when it's time. You understand what I'm saying? It's all about timing. So it's like, hey, I might have one person looking at what I'm saying right now. 70 years from now, I might have 100 million people looking at what I'm saying. It doesn't matter just that what I say is intentional. That's all that matters to me. However it comes out, whenever it comes out, whenever it's heard, uh, that that leverage is always with me because I don't care. You know, as I said, it's those who do that end up falling victim to these things. They end up compromising themselves or running into walls or end up getting shut down. Ain't nothing to shut down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just me in my room. And if you happen to find what I found, cool. You see, if, if you happen to find what I've done, cool. That kind of thing. So, you know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no wiping me away. But at the same time, I also see the fruit in not saying everything. I see the fruit in saying, oh, yeah, now that I have context, maybe I can, maybe that didn't need to be said. Uh, I'm open to that. But until I get that understanding, I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak just like I encourage Kyrie to keep posting, just like I encourage Kanye to keep acting the way he's acting. Because it's disrupting the establishment. And until they give us a reason to not disrupt them, as far as I can tell, they need to be disrupted. That's the point. They need to communicate. They need to communicate. They've been sitting in the shadows for a long time. And while the world didn't have no phones on, the world didn't have no um, no voice, damn, one percenters need to live like that. You need to live in the shadows, and you could effectively live in the shadows. You can walk amongst us, be our janitors, be our lawyers, be, be the dude at the McDonald's. You can do that. Now, I am telling you, we're going to find each and every one of y'all. And it ain't like we're looking for you. It's just the world we're in. You're going to expose y'all. And I'm not saying that in, in bad energy. If anything, I got love in my heart when I say that. Yeah. This is a matter of time. They're going to start looking for y'all. They're going to start looking for y'all. That's where we're headed, man. The conversation about the Jewish people and the Jewish faith. That was taboo, man. That was something people were afraid to do just a year ago. Not even two years ago. A year ago, people would not have got on camera saying, yo, are you the real Jewish people? Are you... Nah, they were afraid of the consequence of what happened. Now, I just don't think we are afraid of people anymore. I think that's where we're at. It's a resentment for groups that we're supposed to revere. When I, when I was growing up, growing up, and I, I know this is a long video, but all of them are long, so thank you for, for bearing with me, but growing up, it was an inherent understanding that you're supposed to respect white people. And I'm not saying you're not supposed to respect black people. You're supposed to respect all people. But I'm saying, like, you're a black person. Your voice going to change when you're in the presence of white people. You got a white voice that you use when you get on the phone with your with, with the people that you, are, you do business with. That's why if you guys listen to me, my dialect can go in and out of black and proper at will. It's because I was raised in a household where my mom did that all the time. She, she would be talking like this at the third, and then the phone would ring and be like, hello, hi, it's Barbara Deloney. Like, for real. And I would see her go in and out of that all night, all day. And so for me, it was so easy to do because that's how I was raised. You're supposed to have a voice that you have when you're around your people and then have a voice that you have when you're in professional situations, also known as around white people, right? That was code for white people. And it's just like, you know, that's not the world we're in. We have people like myself. We have to realize that's not the world we're in no more. People who are, um, you know, of Caucasian walks, they can probably sense that it ain't like that no more. And I don't know what that means or, or where it's headed or what have you, but I'm just saying it's like <laughs> now it gets to a point where there's resentment there. Not necessarily for myself, but it's just like, Nah, I'm going to definitely be unapologetically black when a white person call. I'm going to be more. Like, it's more of that going on to where there's no... The respect we want to have is respect for the truth. Not respect for people we were told to respect because they had power for all this time. And now we got to respect them because that's just what it is. And so when we look at 
the Jewish people and the Jewish faith. It's like, okay, just as I'm describing with the one percenters, why are y'all controlling everything but you're so far away? Why aren't you communicating with us? Why are you so much better than us that you don't want to see, you know what I mean, that you, you won't allow nobody to talk crazy about you, but exploiting us is like funny to everybody and it's supposed to be accepted. And we're, we're crazy for even pointing that out. And dare we say we're about to go in on you for any reason. Then all of a sudden we get money snatched up out of our accounts. Now we're getting banned from different platforms that are supposed to be black owned. I mean, when you look at the situation and you say, nah, black people don't get respected like that. Hell, not even Caucasian people get respected like that. That's a different type of respect. And I don't think anybody appreciates it. Because where does it come from? Where does it come from? Because they happen to own a lot of things. But that's also considered a stereotype that we're supposed to not even engage in. So why, why, are, why are we, why is Kanye getting kicked out of, of Chase Bank because he said something about their group? Or was about to say something about their group? You know what I'm saying? It's like that type of stuff. Nobody wants to sit back and just live in a world where that's the case no more. We don't want to be like, bro, I don't respect that. Why would I respect that? They are more important than me because they have something? or they Nah, hell nah. Let's go take that. You see what I'm saying? That's the mentality now. It's not about, oh, no, we're going to sit here and listen to this and, and certainly respect them because they have a lot and we have a little. And, and dare we not? Nah, hell no. Nah. Eat the rich. That's where we're headed. So I think that everybody has to adjust. That's where that's what we need to do. We need to adjust. Everybody needs to adjust. You know what I mean? And maybe these type of thoughts may prompt fear in the hearts of those who listen. But I don't know. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to get you guys to understand where we're at. We're not going to be sitting here quiet. Saying those people are to be revered while we're, it's okay to exploit us. We're not doing that. That's just not where we're headed. And in other groups, they're not going to be sitting back on the sideline either. I think more groups are going to start being more loud. And I think they should. You don't sit up and look at the, at the, at the LGBTQ uh, community and the black community and, and all these different communities step their game up, get heard, get money. And all these different things for their causes and not step your game up. I say that to all the groups, man. Get up there. Make these people wear Asian Lives Matter. Make these people wear a Spanish Lives Matter shirt. Get up here and make these people feel you. I don't see enough of that. And I'm telling you, I'm not from these groups. So I wouldn't, you know, I'm not in a position to say, hey, it's right to spearhead that or whatever. But I'm feeling like, man, everybody should be on that. Everybody should be on that. You know, I'm from, I'm from Hollywood, California. I, they have an Armenian day. Where well, you going to see Armenian folks riding down the street with the flags out. Orange, blue, and I forget them, the color. Forgive me, I, I don't know. But they come out, boy. They come out, they ride down the streets, and they let you understand what happened to their people. They're going to let you know for that one day, you're going to respect what it was that they went through. I think we need more of that. I think we need more of that. Not less. Not less. You know what I mean? So that's how I feel about the situation. Um, and I'm quick. I'm quick to support others. I would be happy to support others. You know what I'm saying? Just like I was happy to see people support us. I didn't see just black people supporting the movement. Hell no, it was everybody out there. So I think that that's something that we can that can bring us together. Yeah, it's gonna be a great facet of people who be like, yo life, man. But it's gonna be a good facet of people like myself gonna be like, yeah, for sure. I remember the support you gave us. Now let's let's see what we can do for your people too. And once we start doing that, psh, racism is over. Racism's over. Once we start giving a damn about each other, start rooting for each other, start wanting to see each other groups succeed, pfft, white supremacy can't, can't survive in that environment. No supremacy can <laughs> survive in that environment. So there's many people who don't want you to believe that world peace is, is possible. I'm looking at evolution, and I'm saying it's inevitable. If you see how we're growing, it's very, very slow, but we're growing together. I have a complete opposite take on world peace. I think it's inevitable. As we continue to get bigger, faster, stronger, and smarter, we're going to see more and more fruit in working together. We see examples all over the place with different organisms who do it better than us. Ants, roaches, all these different organisms that we cannot stand are examples of what we should be doing every single day. Working together without prejudice. Yeah, that's what we should be doing. So... I think that'll end it, man. 40 minutes of my yap, and I'm sure you heard enough, man. But at the end of the day, I hope that those who hear me understand where I'm trying to go. I understand that a lot of what I'm doing could be dangerous for what it is that you stand for in terms of your, what keeps everything together. But I would say trust. Trust is what I would tell you. Human beings will find a way to work it out. We don't need the old ways of doing things to help us in the new world. If anything, we need to upgrade 
the new ways and make them easy to amend from instead of having it so that we have the same dynamic holding on to old traditions as we pass these traditions to our kids. Teach our kids that these traditions can be changed if they please. Because our great parents, our grandparents and our great great grandparents, they never told us that. They never gave us their blessing to change their traditions. I want that. I want my kids to know that they don't have to do things my way. You can do things your way. Because your way is the new world and that's where you are. My mom lived in a world that she, that, that's no longer here. And she's not here. So her ways, they only matter but so much. Be adaptable, young people. Be adaptable, older people. Because that is what it's going to make it so that you stay current. And that holds a lot of value in my opinion as well. My name is BDL44. And I thank you all for watching.